Hey everyone, it's Tavon here, and today I got a very special video for you. Um, it's a game played at the Dutch Championships um, in Amsterdam last week, and it's a game in the third round uh, between Jordan van Vreest, the, the Dutch Rising Star, and Aaron Lemie, a very solid uh, Dutch Ram Master. And before you want to go to the critical position, I first just want to show you the opening moves, just so you know where this all came from. So, it is a Karakan. And um, Aaron actually picked quite an old line, and um, quite quickly he got a triple pawn on the G file, which is not that good. But he was hoping for some counterplay. So White castles queen side, knight h6, bishop e2. Um, he gives back the g4 pawn, which he couldn't really protect anyway, and he decides to go for the attack on the queen side with b5. And very nice move, bishop f8, just to keep the bishop on the board because he needs his bishop for the attack later on. Um, knight e2, obviously doesn't want to exchange the queen, so he plays b4, knight f4, knight b6. Knight is going to jump to some scary squares, so white obviously plays the b3 move here. And um, he takes an a3, king b1, rook b8, knight takes g6. And this is the position I want to talk about because this is a, is a very, very interesting position. and. Um, when the game was played, I was actually doing the um, live blog on the website, so I was checking the games with my engine, and just to make sure my comments were at least sound. And um, there was also some live commentary um, in the playing hall. And um, the, the biggest focus in this position was um, obviously on, on two moves. Um, one of them is knight a4, and the other one is knight c4. Because it's quite obvious that black needs to try and open up the position to the white king because else it's going to be hard to checkmate so with these two important moves uh, people start analyzing so the most obvious move is is probably knight a4 for the simple reason that not only queen b2 is a checkmate threat but also knight c3 a threatening checkmate so why doesn't really have a choice he has to take the knight on a4 and um, <clears throat> black obviously tries to break open the position with b3, very logical move. Now white can't really take the pawn on b3 because then too many pieces are entering the white position. Um, white goes c3, black goes b2 and there might be some scary stuff with queen a1 check. Um, so let's say white is greedy, takes rook and h8. Black just goes queen a1 check, king c2. And queen takes a4, and it's quite an easy perpetual. If white goes queen d3, we have queen c4, king has to go back, queen a4, and if the king goes to b1, queen a1 check once again. So you can quite easily make a draw here. Um, now instead of taking on h8 <coughs> a few moves back, white can also decide to. Um, take the knight on f5, and here black has a very, very difficult uh, move to find, and also both players didn't manage to find this one during the game, which I, I can imagine. Um, the knight was important on f5, because as you might remember, um, the knight was blocking the e3 square for the king, so the king only had these three squares, so we could make a perpetual. Now the knight is gone, the king can eventually run away to e3, so there's no more perpetual, which means um, black has to find a different idea. So um, the move he needs to play here is quite amazing. He has to go rook takes h2. Brilliant move. The idea is quite simple. Um, if you take an h2 with the rook, you can give check on a1, king c2, and now suddenly b1 queen is just winning the game because the rook on h1 is missing. So you're not protecting b1 often enough. It's a cute little idea. Once you see it, it's easy, but it might be difficult to find. Um, so what is to go queen e1 to cover the b1 square? And now once again, um, it's just a big computer line. You can take on f5. White takes the bishop, and now black just wants to collect some material. b1 queen, rook takes, queen a2 check. And it actually ends in a perpetual, but now on the other side of the board. So this is like the computer line most of us saw, um, at least in the press room, 
And um, I mean, every engine saw this line, so nothing special. Um, now let's go back to the initial position. So here, well, I mean, knight a4 is the move, of course, uh, let me consider this move, but the rook takes h2 was difficult to find, and um, still the cal calculations are quite easy when you're using an engine, but obviously when you're sitting behind the board, it's not so easy. So in the game, let me play rook h7, and this was just way too slow. Um, Favre did a good job, converted um, the position and won in like 15 moves. And the interesting part is, of course, we confronted Lamy with um, the possibility of going root takes h2, and um, uh, also the move um, knight c4 was considered, um, but after a move like queen c1, um, compared to knight a4, the knight c4 move, um, because with knight on a4, we had knight c3 checkmate, with knight on c4, we don't. So we allow white to go queen c1, you don't want to exchange the queen, so the queen has to go back. And, you know, it feels a bit strange for black. It doesn't feel like you get enough out of the position, because there's some material hanging. The knight, the rook, and um, also uh, the bishop and the knight can be taken off the board. So it doesn't feel like you have enough pieces left to checkmate. So knight c4 wasn't really a move um, people paid attention to. And the interesting part is, the game was analyzed and so on and so on. And the next morning, um, Lemmy came to me at breakfast and he said, Did you know that I missed a win in my game from yesterday? And I was quite surprised. I, I, I was a win, are you sure? Um, and he, he explained to me that he had his, um, his supercomputer um, think about his position for like 10 or 15 minutes. And even then, it, it took him some time to come up with the winning move. And you can check it yourself. You can turn on your engine in this position. And you can try and let it find the win for black. <clears throat> um, first of all, the engine will probably give the position like plus five evaluation for white. And I don't think most of the engines that we amateurs uh, use are strong enough to find the win here. And um, But actually, he, of course, he was right. Knight c4 is a winning move. And that is what his engine came up with after quite a long thing. And um, I, I was really amazed that... Um, even my own engine I use, which is um, not that bad, um, simply couldn't find this move after like 10 minutes. Um, so you can check yourself, it's very interesting. The engine doesn't find this move, uh, at least um, doesn't think it's winning for black. Um, and I'll show you what the clue about this move is, because it's, it, this is very interesting stuff. So, knight c4. Um, first of all, let's see the queen c1 move, because that was a problem. Because, well, why wants to exchange the queens, and Nothing much happens after that. So um, the key move is queen a5. And this is a very simple plan. You just want to go rook b, b6, rook a6, and queen e1 checkmate. Now, why there's a few ways to continue. Um, let's first check knight takes h8. Just if white's being greedy, see what black's plan is. So black goes rook b6. And now white needs to make sure he can play queen b2 at any point in order to defend against checkmate. So he needs to take on c4 with the pawn. But now once again b3 is the move. And if you take, simply rook takes. And um, white's just in trouble. He needs to go queen b2 and give up his queen. And if he doesn't, for example, king c2, it's going to be a very quick checkmate. So after queen a5, with this plan, white needs to do something else than taking the rook on h8. Now white has a move, knight takes f8. And the idea is, if um, black continues his plan with rook b6, white can take on e6. Looks a bit strange. Now, if rook to, rook to a6, now white is knight c7, very important move. Um, obviously, attacking the rook, sorry, the rook and the king. Um, and if the queen decides to take the knight, um, then the checkmate threat is gone. We can take on c4. And then the move b3 is not as scary anymore because there's no rook on the b file. So, after knight takes f8, black needs to take back with the rook. He can't continue his plan, so he first needs to make sure the knight is eliminated. Um, and this is where the engine finally starts to notice black is in very good shape. And this is the reason why. One is going to try and find a way to eliminate the knight on c4. Now I'm doing the same thing, sorry. Trying to eliminate the knight on c4. 
in order to make this move possible because it's the only defensive move he has. Uh, but taking with the pawn is dangerous as we just saw, so he should take try and take with a different piece. So bishop e2, now rook b6, bishop takes, pawn takes, queen b2. So white found a way to get his queen on b2. However, it turns out this is actually losing for white. c3 is played, queen a1, because you want to exchange the queens obviously. Queen takes, king takes, rook a6, king b1. And here the engine comes up with a very, very cute move. He plays king of 7 which is totally winning. And you might wonder why. But the plan, once again, is the same as we just saw before. Black just wants to go rook b8, b5, a5, and a1 checkmate. And there's just nothing white can do about it. He can't run away with the king, because once he goes king c1, rook a1 is immediate checkmate. And he can't really bring any defenders, because if he wants to bring the bishop, he has to go to b2. And then the pawn is just simply capturing the bishop on b2. So this is actually winning for black. Even though it's a very slow plan, it is just winning because there's nothing white can do. Um, so that's the whole story about um, the move queen c1. So queen c1 has been eliminated. Now the big question is, knight c4, knight a4, white can still take, right? And it was a draw after knight a4, so why should it be winning after knight c4? Well. It's a very subtle point. Um, obviously, black goes b3 again. c3, because white can't let the position to open up. b2. Um, and now, let's say white takes on h8. Black has... Um, in the previous line, where we played knight a4, black had a perpetual here. Now, however, black has to move d takes c4. And this move is only possible, because black played the knight to c4 forcing the white pawn to take on c4. And um, now black is able to take back the pawn on c4 and suddenly he's blocking the important d3 square for the king. So as you can see the king is, is going to be in trouble. Um, let's say white decides to take the knight on f5. Uh, you can simply give check, king c2. Now the important move queen a2, threatening b1 queen with checkmate, so forcing white to go rook b1. And now you see the importance of the pawn on c4. Queen b3 is just checkmate now, because the pawn is doing a good job of protecting this flight square for the king. So that's a very important difference between knight c4 and knight a4. So this is one important thing to, to notice. Um, so white can't be greedy, he can't just take the rook on h8, so he should try to find a different move. Um, one move he can try is to grab the pawn on d5, simply preventing d takes c4. Um, but now, once again, we get this very pretty move, rook takes h2. It's just a clever tempo move, because the rook is under attack on h8. You can take a pawn, and you can threaten to exchange his rook. So you have this queen a1 and b1 idea back in the position. Um, that means white needs to move his rook, let's say rook to e1. And here comes another brilliant plan, and we saw the idea uh, with d takes c4. Um, because the king is in danger, but we need to make sure he can't run away to d3. So we need to block the d3 square somehow. And we can't do it with d takes c4 now, because that's not possible anymore. So we need to try and find a different way. And, and the engine finds one, of course. He goes rook b3. Looks a bit strange at first. But after the next move, white takes the knight in f5. After the next move, bishop b4, you'll see the plan. So now he's making sure white has to take the bishop on b4 because else there are simply too many pieces um, coming and if, if you allow black um, to bring the rook or the bishop here that's even more dangerous. So he takes on b4. Um, now take on e5 because the bishop is an important defender. Uh, white has no useful moves. He has two extra pieces, a few extra pawns in the center, but no useful moves. So let's say he goes bishop e3 the best engine move, but it doesn't really matter at this point. A queen a1 check, king c2, b1 queen, so the king can't go anywhere, so it's quite a forcing line. Rook takes b1, queen a2 check, king d1, take on b1, king e2, um, rook takes e1, king takes e1, and now you have only one move with black to win the game, 
and that's a very nice one as well. Queen c4, um, blocking in the white king, threatening rook h1, and it's simply too powerful, and white has to give up his queen somehow um, in order to survive this position. Um, well, in order not to get checkmated, surviving is quite a big word when you're down a queen. So, a very, very nice line um, to show why the black position is, is so strong. Um, and as you can see, it's all about uh, making sure the king doesn't run to d3. Um, so that was c takes d5. Now, another move <coughs> that um, seemed to save the day for white was pointed out to me by uh, Twan Burg uh, the day after, also playing in the Dutch Championships. And... Um, so two days after the game, he came to me during breakfast and, and he said, well, I think White can still hold the draw here. And White has to take on f5. Um, so we went through the same line and the engine says, rook takes h2. Good move. Okay, so I just follow the line. Queen, queen e1. Once again, White needs to cover the b1 square because the rook on h1 um, might be traded off. And now the line goes like queen a1. King c2, b1 queen. So once again, a very forced computer line. Queen a2 check, king d3, and rook takes b1. Queen takes b1, d takes c4, king e4, queen e2, bishop e3, taking on f5, king takes f5, queen h5 check, and king e6. So the king runs all the way to e6 and is finally safe here, safe from all the checks. Um, well, not all the checks, black has one more check, queen g4 check, queen f5, um, and now the king is safe, so black needs to exchange the queens. You can take on h1, it's up the exchange, has a very dangerous a pawn, but white still needs to find the only move here, d5, very important, activating the bishop and making sure he can capture the a7 pawn. Now, black is still up the exchange, but as you can see, he's not very active, and white is very active. So this end game well, should probably just be a draw. So I was surprised. Hmm, how did my computer miss this line? And how did um, Lamine not find this line in his analysis? Um, so the king run to e6 seems to be enough um, to hold the draw. But once again, after bishop f5, I fell for the same trap. I did not let my engine calculate long enough. And um, you need to give him some time, but at some point he figures out e takes f5 is actually winning. That again was pointed out to me by Naud Lentjens the day after again. So, and analysis um, went on for a few days before he finally came to a final conclusion of this position. And Black should just take back on f5. Um, and now the simple threat once again is to go d takes c4. Um, obviously aiming to block off the d3 square for the king. Now, um, if white goes c take d5, for example, now black can benefit from the fact that the bishop on g4 is gone because of the exchange for the knight on f5. And with the bishop gone on g4, black has to move rook h3. Once again, the h rook is playing a very important role. And once again, he is there to block off the d3 square. Very important square as you can see. Can't point it out often enough in this game. Uh, let's say white goes bishop e3 to make the square free for the king again. Now queen a1, queen a4 check, king b1 and c5. Once again threatening to go c4 and get this d3 square. It's amazing how such a complex position is all about one square. And um, if he decides to take on c5, you can give check on a1 again, go queen a2, rook b1, queen b3, king d3, and now queen takes d5, check, king c2, queen goes back to b3, king d3, and rook d8. And now we managed to get this pawn out of the way, we captured the d5 pawn, and suddenly the d files open for the rook, and we can win a queen. Another amazing line in this position. 
So that's what happens if white takes the pawn on d5. Um, now just a little extra thing, rook h3, bishop e3. You might wonder, why do we have to go queen a1, queen a4 check before we go c5? Well, explanation is quite easy. But well, once again, you just have to see it first. If you go c5 immediately, white simply goes queen d3. And now you can't really support um, this move anymore. And more importantly, the white king can run away to a different square, which is d2. And well, we had some chances covering the d3 square. Covering the d2 square is nearly impossible here. Um, so that is c takes d5. Um, you have one more move, which is c5. Once again, preventing um, d takes c4. Now we can take on h2 again. Um, and the difference is that we've already taken on f5, so the white king doesn't get chased all the way to e6. Um, queen e1, rook takes, queen takes, queen a1 check, king c2 b1 queen, rook takes b1, rook takes, uh, sorry, queen a2, king d3, and now we simply grab the material, and we have a similar endgame to the endgame we had before, where the king ran all the way to e6, but this time it's different, because we have a huge, huge pawn on a7, um, which is just going to run all the way to a1, and the king is cut off uh, from the b-file, <coughs> and also the pawn center is not as impressive as it was before, because... Well, black has a few pawns in the center as well. Um, and But the most important thing is white is not able to get rid of the A pawn immediately. So with the extra exchange and the past A pawn, <coughs> black has a huge edge in this endgame. And this endgame should actually be winning. Um, and that also concludes the analysis and... Um, the very interesting lines of, of this very complex position and I can really advise you have a look at this game with your engine and, and see what it says and then slowly walk through the lines and let the engine see what happens and you can see uh, the judgment of the engine go from winning for white to winning for black and it just shows us that even um, in these days where we have quite strong computers at home um, you always have to be creative yourself and uh, the computer doesn't see everything, even if you let it think for quite a while. Um, it's no guarantee that you find all the best moves. So um, I will uh, see and try to upload the um, PGN somehow. And um, for now, you just have to. Um, oh, you can check the lines from the video. So I, I hope you enjoyed this this very spectacular game. At least I did. And um, it was good fun and um, crazy stuff happening here. So um, hope you enjoyed it and thank you for watching.